Good evening, everybody. I hope you're all having a nice evening. I guess depending on where you're from, um, it may still be during the daytime. But I uh, want to welcome everybody tonight to the webinar on beautiful boundaries. I'm going to give a few minutes for people to log in. And uh, as people are logging in, we'll do a brief introduction of myself. My name is Sheila Pluzzi, and I am a co director at Mental Health Foundations. And one of our visions and inspirations at Mental Health Foundations is to be able to offer uh, free and easily accessible resources to individuals. So that is why we're doing the webinar tonight on beautiful boundaries, because um, I'm also um, a therapist and I have a private practice in Sault Ste. Marie. And I know when Adele and Natasha and I were discussing what might be valuable to other people, um, we were thinking boundary setting. I know that you know a lot of the clients that I work with at times struggle with it. I know that I'm still on my journey in figuring out how to set boundaries uh, and navigate my way through that. So we are gonna be spending an hour this evening all on beautiful boundaries. Um, you'll notice at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A box. So you may feel free to type in those questions uh, at any time. And what I will do is uh, about the last 10 minutes of the webinar, I will address uh, as many questions as possible. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get through to them all. And if not, feel free to email me if you'd like. Uh, I would also just want people to know we are recording this webinar. Um, we wanted to do that so anyone who couldn't attend this evening uh, is, will be able to access it on our website at uh, www.mentalhealthfoundations.ca and I do have uh, that website up on uh, one of the PowerPoint slides as well so you can access it. Um, I think that's about it in terms of admin stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. that you can see the PowerPoint. You can tell technology is not a super strong suit of mine. Slideshow. There we go. Uh, so I see most people are logged on. I'm actually really excited about this topic and about how many people were interested. So I'm hoping that you can find something of value this evening. And uh, I'm thinking even when I was doing the presentation for this, there's so much material on beautiful boundaries and so much that came up. Uh, I'll likely be doing a part two as well. I just don't have uh, a data assigned to that yet. So stay tuned. So what we will cover in the next hour is uh, what a boundary is, the importance of boundaries, why they are so dang hard to set for a lot of us, and I will also lead you through an experiential exercise um, to help you to decide you know, on a boundary for yourself and also to work through some of the emotions that can come up. Um, when we go to set a boundary or in anxieties in terms of how to communicate it. Uh, so we'll be doing an experiential exercise that will hopefully be helpful uh, to help you set a boundary in your life um, in the near future. So as you'll see on the bottom, this is being recorded and the website is below. So I usually, within a week, will have the video uploaded and you can access it at any time. I did a ton of research because um, I wanted to find a really accurate description of a boundary. And although there were some phenomenal um, explanations and definitions in a lot of the academia, this one stood out the most for me. And I'll give credit to Brene Brown um, for this one because to me it was the most clear. And what is a boundary? Essentially, it is what is okay and what is not okay for me. And the answers to that are going to be based on us as individuals. We all have different needs. Um, we all have different wants and experiences in life. So my boundaries may not be the same uh, as any of yours that are watching. So it's a very, very individual experience. 
Um, and they can come in different realms. So a boundary isn't necessarily always physical, you know, where I'm going to um, keep somebody away or uh, create physical space. We can have those as part of boundaries, but there's also emotional boundaries in terms of it might be about what I'm comfortable sharing in a particular relationship or what I'm comfortable hearing in a relationship in terms of emotional experiences. We can have sexual boundaries in terms of um, you know, what we're willing to engage in, who we're willing to engage in it with. Energetic boundaries, I was referring more to in terms of giving of our energy. So I know a lot of um, the people that I work with and also myself where I've struggled at times is giving of my energy. So like that workaholic kind of mode where I, I struggle and still do with um, putting really good boundaries for myself in terms of where I spend my energy, um, who I give my energy to, and then creating balance within that. And then temporal, I was referring to time. So I'm sure a lot of you can relate uh, if, you know, in terms of working, if you have children, managing your, you know, couple relationship that it all takes time and a lot of people struggle with how to manage that so we can put boundaries in place in terms of our time and one example for that is I know for myself I always struggle with fitting in self-care so what I'll try to do is uh, literally book myself in my appointment book as a, my own client so that I block off an hour for myself so temporal is just in terms of how we can create boundaries around our time. And then the symbol is form, you know, in terms of like a compass, it's like what do I want to say yes to and what do I want to say no to? And as we go along um, in the experiential, you get an opportunity to, to really make it personal and, and decide on a boundary that you're really wanting or needing to put in place uh, in your life right now. So the importance of boundaries. Um, there's a myth, the more giving we are of our time, money, and efforts, that the more compassionate we are. And this was brought forth in, uh, again, Brene Brown, I love her, some of her research. And she found that the truth was the most compassionate people are great at setting boundaries. And we will talk, like I'll talk a little bit more about why, you know, this is a truth. Um, as we go on, but essentially, you know, I think there's a myth that, you know, if I make this person happy and I give my time here and I give my money here and I give my energy here and I, that we're going to become more compassionate. But what often happens is we become exhausted, burnt out, possibly resentful. And so in the research that Brene Brown did, she found that when people, the most compassionate, genuinely compassionate people are great at setting boundaries around their time, their energy, their finances, um, and all of the above. So I know when I first heard her speak that, I had a bit of a, a visceral reaction, like, what do you mean? And if any of you are having that reaction too, I, just, I wanna normalize it, and we'll get into kind of why that reaction probably was there, but for a lot of us, I think it is based on that belief um, that we have to be nice. And if we give, 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 then we're nice. But nice doesn't always translate to compassionate and loving. Um, and then the integral, it's integral for our relationships with ourselves and with others. So I know when I started really delving into my own work around boundaries, to me, I thought it was more about, you know, between myself and other people. And I didn't quite understand the value um, and the difference that I would have on my relationship with myself. So when we can, you know, put boundaries in place, essentially we're saying to ourselves that, you know, you are important enough to decide what is okay for you and what is not okay for you and to communicate that. And you are valuable enough to get your needs met as well, as opposed to, you know, making sure everybody else's needs are attended to. So when we can set boundaries, it's not, you know, it's a really huge gift to ourselves and it can also be a gift in our relationships because when we can be really clear um, around our boundaries, then, you know, very, well, I'm not saying, maybe not rarely, but 
it's less likely that other people will cross them. Because if we know what they are and we can speak them clearly and stand, you know, really kind of tall in our truth, then other people will learn to respect that. So it also can protect us from becoming resentful or even sometimes hateful towards others. Um, so it can be really, really integral in our boundaries. And I know when, again, when I first started this work, I had a ton of fear um, around how it would impact my relationship with relationships with other people or how other people would see me. And the fear is if I say no, I might be seen as uh, not nice or the B-I-T-C-H. And we'll get into a little bit about, you know, why those core beliefs are there. Um, Cause not only was it true for myself, but I know a lot of the clients that I've worked with have voiced this as well, that there's a lot of fear about saying no to somebody or putting a boundary up with another person for fear of negative impact for the relationship. So we will explore that a bit more deeply. Um, and that nothing is sustainable without boundaries. And I know it's a pretty um, bold statement, I guess. But again, when I was doing a lot of the research, um, it became really clear, and in my own work, that if we don't have any boundaries, you know, for ourselves or with other people, things become really unclear. We become exhausted. We get really, um, I think, lost kind of in, in resentment or frustration. Um, and maybe like we're feeling like we're devalued or we might start pushing other people away and creating really rigid boundaries to keep other people out. Um, so when I read that statement, I, I really feel as though that it is true that in order to be able to sustain our healthy relationship with ourselves and a healthy relationship with other people, uh, that boundaries are a really integral part of that. And like most things, it is not easy but it's most definitely worth it. So even as I was putting this webinar together, I was really conscious of, you know, and I, and I hope and I want to communicate to everybody that this webinar is not like 10 easy steps to, you know, setting boundaries. Although we will look at steps that can help us towards it. It really is um, a life, like a, maybe not a lifelong process, but for me, it's been years that I've been working at setting boundaries and changing my relationship with myself, being able to speak my truth, changing my relationships with other people and adjusting to their responses. So even though we're only meeting for an hour, um, it's not going to be, you know, a quick and easy way to set boundaries. And, and just to give you all permission that, you know, after watching this webinar, even if you attempt, you know, some of the strategies or the steps and struggle, to normalize it and invite you to bring kindness to yourself um, it, within the struggle. It really, really is a process and a journey. And to me, it, it's been a bit of a skill development as well. Because when we're not used to either speaking our truth or asking for what we need or saying no, um, it, it, it's really difficult. And we'll look at in this next slide why it's so hard. So there are two really big emotions that play into why a lot of us really, really struggle with setting boundaries. And, you know, the historical context is intergenerational. Intergenerationally, we've had, you know, a lot of emotion avoidance in, you know, overall with a lot, all of emotions, but in terms of gender, specifically us as females. So for those of you who are females that are watching, um, intergenerational patterns of emotional avoidance around anger are uh, very, very strong. And, you know, as you'll see in that quote, when we struggle to accept our anger with kindness, it makes it difficult to create and communicate healthy boundaries. And yet a lot of us were raised that, you know, learning that expressing anger is not okay. You know, for young women, typically, I'm not gonna blanket statement that, but typically in research shows, that most females are raised to not express anger, that it's not okay to stand up and have a voice and have an opinion. And there's definitely shifts happening, um, you know, with this generation, but a lot of us were raised that anger is not okay. And so, you know, we never learned how to healthily express anger. And, you know, that first point, anger arises in the face of a threat and the biological need to soothe anger is a boundary. 
So if we were raised, you know, that anger is not okay to express, that asserting yourself is not okay, then we wouldn't have developed the skill of setting boundaries. And so if you were, you know, have ever felt any shame about yourself for not being able to do this, or I know a lot of, um, you know, other women I've worked with and even myself, I'll get frustrated. Like I know better. I know I shouldn't have said yes to this project or to that person. Why the heck didn't I do it? I'm so stupid. I'm so, you know, we tend to shame ourselves for not doing it. But if you can really kind of ground yourself in the truth that if you were not uh, encouraged or taught how to express anger in a healthy way, chances are you wouldn't have developed the skill of setting boundaries. So anger is a huge component in that. Um, and it has been an intergenerational truth for a lot of us. And in that brackets, it says, you know, be nice. So a lot of us may have even experienced shame in the face of anger. You know, when we, when we were younger and maybe, I don't like that person or I don't like that or that's not fair. Some of us were shamed for expressing that, right? Even though it might have been a healthy expression and just trying to have your voice heard and opinion stated. A lot of us were told that, you know, it's disrespectful. You know, the old go to your room uh, and don't come out so you can change your attitude. So, our, I mean, our parents did the best with what they had. Um, However, they also shut down anger a lot of the time. So if you were ever shamed at expressing anger, then setting boundaries may be even more difficult because there might be that internal mechanism within you that says, no, that's, that's really rude or it's really disrespectful for me to say no to somebody or especially if it's someone who's older or you know, depending on the relationship dynamic. So if you can just hold on to these things as we go into it and try to bring kindness to yourself when you do struggle because these are realities for a lot of us and the other big emotion that plays into why it's so dang hard to set boundaries um i put guilt in there it's a combination of guilt and shame so a very quick i guess um description for each because they kind of can feel the same Guilt is more of a focus on behavior, right? I did something bad or I did something wrong. Shame is more of a focus on self. I am something bad or I am not good enough. Um, but they're both big culprits in why we struggle with setting boundaries. And I hear a lot of people say, you know, and I've felt this way myself, if I'm not a nice person, you know, if I say no, I'm not a nice person if I say no, or I'm selfish if I set boundaries. If I put myself first, you know, then that makes me really selfish. And this goes for women especially. So if there are men watching this um, webinar, I'm not intentionally being gender biased. Uh, I promise a lot of this has been proven in the research. And also want to acknowledge that a lot of men struggle with boundaries too. But when it comes specifically to shame, shame for women is do it all, do it perfectly, and do it with a smile. Perfect recipe, right, for disaster when you talk about setting boundaries. Because setting boundaries is sometimes saying, no, I'm not going to do it all. Or, no, I'm not going to, um, you know, stay up all night to make sure it's perfect. I'm going to do it good enough. Um, so when you think of, you know, how we experience shame most strongly, it makes it even more difficult for us to set boundaries because a lot of us put really high expectations on ourselves that we need to be the one to do it all and do it perfectly. And, and everything's great. It was so awesome to stay up all night and bake cookies you know, for the class. Um, and it, yeah, it's, sorry, I just, I, I'm hearing people giggling, even though I can't hear anybody's responses. But it's one of those things that us as women really genuinely struggle with. Um, and we're, so we feel a lot of shame if we go to set boundaries a lot of the time. We also fear others' judgment of us. So, you know, I've, when I've worked with other people or when I've went to set boundaries, 
in my life, uh, there'll always be this kind of like guilt or shame reaction of, okay, so if I tell them what I need, or I attempt to set this boundary with this person, I'm afraid they're going to think that I'm either being rude or mean or think I'm a B-I-T-C-H. And that fear of the judgment of others keeps a lot of us from being able to speak our truth, right? Around, especially around setting boundaries. So we kind of swallow it down, put a smile on our face and say, I'd love to do that. <laughs> Even though our entire body is screaming, no, just say no. <laughs> so that can be a huge barrier um, that comes up. And we also fear, I put it in quotations, but we also fear hurting others. And I, I put it in quotations because, you know, if saying no to someone doesn't technically hurt them, but there's a lot of fear around, you know, hurting someone's feelings or disappointing another person. And that can keep us stuck in being able to set boundaries as well. And so even though, you know, with the anger and the guilt and the shame, these are very real barriers that a lot of us deal with. I also don't want to give the impression that, well, so what's the point? Don't, don't set boundaries. We can work through it. I just wanted to be able to talk about why it's so hard because a lot of the times I know when I've either learned new things or, you know, attended webinars myself, there's a lot of this great information, but then sometimes I can't follow through with it. And often, you know, what's happening in that is because emotions are coming up and getting in the way. So I wanted to be able to talk about this as you go and practice setting boundaries. If these emotions arise, that they're, they're very real and they, they do create barriers within us because a lot of us would rather swallow kind of what we're feeling and needing um, over risking, you know, harming a relationship with somebody else or having someone else be disappointed in us. And so if these bubble up, you know, throughout the webinar or, you know, when you go out and try to set a boundary, again, to try to bring compassion to it, to not judge yourself for it or, you know, not perceive yourself as weak or, oh my goodness, Sheila told me about this, so I should know better, therefore I should do better. Emotions have a really, really big impact on us. And especially if these are lessons and things that we learned early on in childhood, our brains are wired, you know, for these defaults. So to be really kind with yourself as you try to make changes and try to set boundaries, if, you know, if guilt or shame comes up around it, to just bring compassion to it, you know? Okay, yep. I know this is going to be hard. Here's the shame. I'm really afraid of this person judging me. Uh, I'm not going to beat myself up for that. And what do I need to do, you know, in order to still be able to speak my truth, despite this fear of the guilt or shame? So the impact. Many of you will be very familiar um, with a lot of these because a lot of us struggle with setting boundaries. Burnout and exhaustion is one of the most, I don't want to say popular, but that almost doesn't sound right, but one of the most common um, impacts or call it symptoms that I hear. Being overly apologetic. I have been so guilty of this in my life. You know, the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I exist. I'm sorry I'm early. I'm sorry I'm late. I'm sorry I only made four dozen instead of five dozen cookies. I'm sorry that, um, you know, you're angry at me because I said no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That, um, because I've been there, I know it, it's not an empowering sense of self. For any of us, when we feel like we're constantly having to apologize, or even like, I'm sorry for putting a boundary up, you know, it, it kind of takes away from the, the strength of being able to put boundaries in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. So some of you might be able to relate to the I'm sorry. Never feeling good enough. So when we struggle to set boundaries, often, you know, as I mentioned the slide before, we're really wanting to please others and make sure everybody else is you know okay and make sure their needs are met and so in that we unintentionally 
sometimes intentionally neglect ourselves. And a lot of the time the bar is so high, right? And the boundaries are so non-existent that we never reach the bar. So a lot of people never, ever, ever feel like they're doing enough. Right? Even if there's a woman I met with the other day, you know, taking care of children, taking care of parents, taking care of spouse, taking care of the job, taking care of the house, taking care of the pets, take, and still never feeling good enough because there were not a lot of boundaries in place. So that can be um, a really common impact as well if we struggle with setting boundaries. We devalue ourselves, whether we mean to or not. Uh, every time that I say no to me, when I really, really, really want to say no to somebody else, whether I mean to or not, I'm unintentionally giving myself the message that I'm not as important, that my time or energy or finances or emotions aren't as important and the other persons are. And over time, that can really wear on our sense of self. This one um, is a big one and a common one. And sometimes we feel shame around it. So I'm going to say it out loud and talk about it so that it can just be what it is. Resentment and passive aggressiveness towards others. I know for myself, when I start making jabs at my husband, that there is a boundary I'm needing and not communicating. Passive aggressiveness and resentment are side effects of when we hold in that healthy anger. So if I am, you know, maybe needing a bit of help around the house or needing him to pitch in and help me manage some stuff throughout the week, but I'm not communicating that, he might get the nice jabs of, oh, must be nice, must be nice to chill out and watch TV, must be nice to relax. And we are all guilty of it. We don't have to shame like it. We don't have to shame ourselves for it. We can own it. I also encourage you to pay attention to the, you know, your different relationships where you're feeling resentment and passive or expressing passive aggressiveness. Chances are you're probably needing a boundary in place somehow in some way. Um, and then that feeling of being unappreciated or taken advantage of. Yuck. It's a really gross feeling, especially when you know we're trying to make sure everybody else is happy and take care of their needs and to not feel appreciated in, in the process of that uh, can create a ton of resentment um, and just it's almost sad right there's resentment but also some sadness in that and then the taken advantage of is more of that anger Right. I gave my time or I did this for this person and you know now I'm struggling and they're not even offering to help me out um, I just feel so used and taken advantage of and so it's, it can also be kind of delineated or called like the doormat syndrome where when we struggle with not setting boundaries we genuinely start to feel like a doormat um, I know you know when I was younger I, I when I look back and reflect, I was the yes girl. You know, someone asked, yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and people come to expect it. So then more people ask and people find out, you know, how nice you are and how willing you are to help everybody else. So now more people are asking. And it can lead to that doormat feeling syndrome where it's like, holy moly, um, I just feel like all, every, all anybody ever wants is to take from me. And again, that can create resentment, that can create that sense of feeling devalued ourselves, that we're being taken advantage of. Um, and and I, it's probably something that, um, in, to some degree, that you can all relate to. And the very, I guess, on the very extreme end, we may even accept abuse in our relationships. Now, I did hesitate even putting that in there because I really hope that that is not taken as um, a judgment or you know if anyone is in an abusive relationship that they're um, at fault or to blame um, it is a very real truth though is if we don't know or communicate you know what is okay and what is not okay for us then 
eventually what happens is other people decide. And if there's someone who's not, <clears throat> pardon me, healthy in our lives, <clears throat> in a relationship, it can lead to abuse. So I'm hoping that that doesn't feel like a blame statement um, to anybody watching. Um, but it is, call it a risk, uh, if, we, if we don't know how to set boundaries or if we don't have any boundaries in place in terms of what's okay and what's not okay for us in our relationships. Pardon me. <clears throat> so what I'm actually going to do um, is we're going to get a little practice because sometimes it's a lot more helpful to do than to just hear the information. So what I want to invite you all to do is get a piece of paper and a pen and to first start with thinking about a person in your life right now with whom you struggle to set healthy boundaries. This can be a colleague, a friend, a partner, um, even your children, a parent, anybody at all. And then what I want you to do next is think about why do you struggle to set healthy boundaries with that person? So based on what we've reviewed so far, you know, is it um, that you struggle with assertive anger and never learned the skill? Is it, you know, with this particular relationship, you feel really guilty if you say no or put a boundary up? Um, do you feel ashamed, you know, even needing, whether it's time to yourself, if that's the boundary, or do you feel like you're not valuable enough to, to share with the person that you don't, maybe it's you don't appreciate how they talk to you? Just to take a moment and think of why it is, without judgment of yourself, but why is it so hard for you to set boundaries with this person? <clears throat> And then next, what I'd like you to do is take some time to think about what boundary would you like to set with them? And if you're feeling your anxiety go up, you do not have to go and do this now. You do not even have to go and do it after the webinar. This is more of an exercise for yourself that we're going to do but to be really specific and write it down. Are you, you know, needing more time to yourself? Are you needing, um, you know, in a friendship, more reciprocity? You know, are you needing your friend to hear you just as much as you hear them? Are you needing uh, your partner to help out in certain areas? Are you needing you know, just some time to yourself and you need someone, you know, whether it's a babysitter, a parent, a friend, um, to watch the children or create that time and space to be really specific on what is the boundary that you're needing in that particular relationship. And so I guess one of the struggles with webinars is I am not sure if anyone or if everyone is done or has an answer. So I'm just going to allow for about 10 more seconds um, for you to be able to write it down because it will be uh, a really important piece to uh, the guided visualization that I'll be doing with you next. Okay, so I'm hoping everyone has a person in mind and a specific boundary that they'd like to set. And what I'm gonna invite everybody to do now 
is to participate in this guided visualization. So I will be taking you through um, this visualization. And if you haven't done uh, any visualization or meditations in the past, to let you know, um, even if you are not seeing clearly, you know, in your mind's eye when your eyes are closed, if you're not getting a clear picture, um, that that's okay. So if you, I don't want people to feel like they're getting stuck on if they can't see, you know, what I'm encouraging you to visualize, that the act or the intention of having that visualization activates the same parts of our brains. So to give yourself that permission, you know, it might be a blurry, it might, an image might come in and come out as we go along. Um, but just to know that your intention to participate is, you know, it's just as effective as if you were watching it like a movie. And so I'll invite you now, if it feels comfortable to do so, do a quick review of your boundary so that you know clearly what it is as we'll be using it in the guided visualization. And once you've reviewed your boundary, I invite you to close your eyes. And we're gonna begin by taking some slow and deep breaths just to settle in to the body and calm the mind. So inhale through the nose, and exhale through the mouth. Inhaling for three, two, one, and exhale for three, two, one. Again, inhale and exhale. And at this point, you can choose to continue with the slower deep breaths, or you can allow your breath to return to its natural rate and rhythm. And in your mind's eye, I want you to visualize the person you'd like to set a boundary with standing in front of you. Just be aware of your reaction to them as you see them in front of you without any judgment of yourself or them. Take a moment now Continue to breathe deeply and fully as you imagine your feet are firmly planted to the ground below. See yourself standing tall, calm, and confident. Your heart is open. Now in your mind's eye or out loud, communicate your boundary to the other person as clearly as you can. Observe their response to what you said. Are they open? angry, hurt. And how do you feel in the face of their reaction? Relieved, guilty, pleased, frustrated, Resentful. Try to accept whatever emotions or reactions arise and use your breath to calm you and move through any uncomfortable feelings or thoughts.
Once again, visualize yourself standing tall, calm, confident, and open-hearted. And repeat your boundary to the person in front of you once again. Let your words flow from your heart with love and kindness for yourself and the other person, regardless of how they respond to your boundary in this moment. You are worthy of speaking your truth and honoring what you need, even if it's uncomfortable. Notice if their reaction has shifted in any way this time. Were they more open to receiving what you need? If not, that is okay too. Continue to breathe. Stand tall in your truth and offer love and kindness to you both. It is so hard to set boundaries and say what we need. And you are both doing the best you can in this moment. Now I want you to take some time and visualize how your life will be different once your boundary is in place. Will you feel more empowered, confident, valued, or less overwhelmed or stressed. Really get a sense of how things will be different for you. And now repeat either aloud or in your mind's eye, it is okay for me to set boundaries. I can choose what is okay and not okay for me. I love myself and speak my truth. Setting boundaries honors me and my relationships with others. Take a deep cleansing breath. And just observe without judgment how those affirmations resonate in your heart. And then repeating again after me, either aloud or in your mind's eye. It is okay for me to set boundaries. I can choose what is okay and not okay for me. I love myself and speak my truth. Setting boundaries honors me and my relationships with others. And again, just get a sense of how those messages resonate within you. If you feel resistance to any of them, it's okay. 
Just notice without judgment. We're going to take a cleansing breath in. And exhale. And one more time to repeat, either aloud or in your mind's eye. It is okay for me to set boundaries. I can choose what is okay and not okay for me. I love myself and speak my truth. Setting boundaries honors me and my relationships with others. Now I'll invite you all <clears throat> to take two cleansing breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And one more in and out. And if you feel Necessary, you can just spend a moment before opening your eyes. Just take note if there's any messages or feelings that you want to carry with you or write down. And when you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes and bring your awareness back into the room. And I'll also allow just for a few seconds if you wanted to write down any notes or thoughts uh, that came to you throughout the meditation. And then I'll continue. <clears throat> so I loved the moment that I really, really understood that healthy anger includes compassion. And so does setting boundaries. And these are some of the reasons why it can be imperative. Um, I don't know if imperative sounds so dire, but important uh, to include compassion uh, for ourselves and others when setting boundaries. So it can help us to soothe guilt uh, and or shame that may arise. Um, this is especially for ourselves, you know, I know when, um, I love to do trainings and travel for work and I would have a lot of guilt, um, around leaving the family about that and, you know, being able to create that boundary and make it be okay and bring compassion to myself to be able to do those things, uh, help me to communicate, you know, what I needed and when I wanted to be able to go on these work trips or you know, whether it was for work or for pleasure at times. And so compassion can really help soothe that guilt and shame so that we can better communicate what we're needing and what boundary we want. It can, you know, the impact of being nice versus loving. So I can't remember what point it was, but my, my husband had made the observation that you know, I wasn't as nice anymore. <laughs> but I was more loving and I really not in the moment, but I really like that because when, when I'm being nice, it's usually more about wanting to be liked, you know, and not necessarily being authentic to myself. So being nice, you know, was that kind of pattern of taking care of everybody else and making sure everybody else's needs are taken care of and that they like me and they think I'm a nice person. And that would get exhausting and would bring me to places, you know, maybe feeling resentful or burnt out, you know, all of that whole slide of the impact of not being able to set boundaries. And as I'm improving at setting boundaries, I love that there is that observation that I'm, I'm genuinely more loving, you know, so when I do things um, for other people or when I say yes, 
it's a, it's an authentic, true yes. It's something that I want to do and put my energy into, and I feel really wholehearted about it. So I use that kind of as my anchor, you know, do I want to be nice or do I want to be loving? <laughs> um, or sometimes I use that in the decision-making process. You know, am I saying this yes to be nice? Or am I saying yes because it's an authentic, loving reaction that I'm having? It, uh, compassion can help us to avoid aggressive or rigid boundaries. So I know when I first started doing my work um, and communicating boundaries, I went through, I called it like the teenage phase. And I would be really kind of rigid in my boundaries. Like, you know, like I just think of that teenage stance with the hands on the hips, like I'm not doing it. And, uh, that wasn't so effective. <laughs> it was kind of empowering to be able to say no in situations, um, but that more aggressive or rigid kind of communication impacted my relationship at times. So by bringing compassion to the other person as well and not, you know, not assuming that they're trying to suck the life out of me or they're trying to take advantage of me, you know, bringing compassion to them helps to soften, um, you know, how we communicate our boundaries or even how we respond if they're not happy. Uh, it acknowledges your value and that you're deserving of attending to your needs. So when we can recognize, you know, I need a break or I need help or I need um, better treatment or I need, I need, I need, when we can recognize that and communicate it for ourselves, it is uh, really empowering and changes. It begins to change our relationship with ourselves. Uh, it supports compassionate communication of the boundary to the other person. So very similar, you know, instead of that rigid teenage, no, or this is what I'm going to do. Just be like, this is what I need. It's very important to me. And, you know, if it's, I, and I need you to stop uh, making fun of me, or I need you to let me speak, you know, when I have something to say. It can help us communicate in a, in a, in a firm but a softer way and allows space to recognize why others may struggle with our boundaries, especially if it's a new behavior for us. So I know in uh, several different, whether it was a friendship or um, some of my poor husband, because that's one of my closest relationships. Um, but when I started, you know, setting boundaries and communicating boundaries, there wasn't always the greatest response. And I think it's important to be able to, to talk about, you know, some of the reasons why, um, you know, the other person may not respond so well and to bring compassion to it because often we have a dynamic right in our relationships friendships you know whether it's parent child partner relationships um, with our parents and you know if we've been the yes girl or the yes man for a really long time and all of a sudden we're saying no that can really you know disrupt you know or you know cause a reaction in the other person and it doesn't necessarily mean um that they're not going to allow or make space for those boundaries, but that initial response um, can be a little hard to take. And in your in the guided visualization, that may have been something that you experienced as well. And so when we can bring compassion, you know, towards that other person for their response, then it, it allows us to kind of see their point of view as well. And Actually, I'm going to do this one first because um, it's more on what we're talking about right now. It's so common. So this is, these are some necessary warnings. If you're new at setting boundaries, other people won't always react positively. And the why is a lot to do with what I've already mentioned. If there's an established dynamic and there's a change in any way, every action has a reaction. So if I'm now saying no when I used to say yes, there's going to be a reaction to that. And, you know, what I encourage is to try to continue to navigate <laughs> um, and let, you know, sometimes it's like giving the person a heads up. Like I, you know, I watched this webinar Sheila did on boundaries and I'm really working at communicating what I need and being more clear with boundaries. Giving people who are close to you a heads up can help prepare them. Um, or if you can prepare yourself for their response and to try to bring compassion to both of you if it's something new in terms of the relationship dynamic. Um, and part of the work, you know, is navigating between maintaining 
our authenticity and avoiding the discomfort of others' reactions. So I know what's put a halt to me in my work with boundaries is uh, when I've been really fearful of other people getting mad at me or uh, being disappointed or maybe not liking me. Um, that was a big piece that I had to work through um, so that I can continue being authentic. Because uh, a lot of setting boundaries is about being authentic. It's recognizing what we need and being able to communicate that. Um, so just to put that out as part of the work, and, and if you notice struggle, that that might be part of the struggle. Uh, again, not easy, but definitely worth it, and that it's a process. And I'm going to go back to the affirmations part, because it's one way to bring compassion um, into this whole process of setting boundaries. So if you want, you know, I invite you, you can take a picture um, of this slide. These are the, uh, the affirmations that I use in the guided visualization. And affirmations can be used not just as reminders, they can help us soothe. So if the guilt is coming up, you know, if you're wanting to say no to somebody and the guilt and the shame is starting to bubble up, you can put your hands on your heart and take a few breaths and repeat these affirmations and that can help just calm your nervous system and make it easier to communicate the no. Um, and it's also a way to begin to cultivate a new relationship, um, not just with ourselves, but with boundaries. So even if you don't believe, you know, in the meditation, if you felt resistance to any of these messages, um, I still encourage, you know, you to practice because what we're doing when we repeat affirmations is we're creating a new neural pathway, a new way of um, being with ourselves, a new way of thinking of and feeling about boundaries. And so even if we don't believe in them yet, that, you know, we have their energy flows where our focus goes. So if this becomes a part of daily practice and uh, affirming to yourself over and over that it's okay, over time, it starts to become our truth and it can help it make it easier when we want to communicate boundaries. Um, and the one piece that I, I didn't mention is sometimes we, I know in my work, the other person <laughs> is ourselves. I know a lot of the times when I've done work with boundaries, um, and even when I was doing the, the visualization earlier today, I pictured myself. Like I needed, I needed to put a boundary up with myself because sometimes we can be our own worst enemies, right? That part of us that says, you need to do more, you need to do better, or you're not doing enough, or make sure they're happy, or don't let that person down. Sometimes it's more of an internal war, an internal struggle. And that's where, <clears throat> pardon me, affirmations has been really helpful for me. And just giving that permission that it's okay. You know, I can choose what's best for me and okay. I can speak my truth. Um, so affirmations can be really powerful um, at creating a new way of being with ourselves and, uh, and then working with our boundaries. And this um, review I encourage you as well to take a screenshot or a photo of if you want to be able to practice this or revisit it. Um, you'll also have um, the opportunity as well if you want to come back and do the guided visualization at any time. Uh, the video will be up within a week, so you're more than welcome to access it that way as well. And I know I have one minute for questions, so I'm going to click on really quickly. Oh, fabulous. I guess somewhere along the way there was a question and then I answered it. <laughs> well, that just worked out perfectly for timing. Um, so I want to thank everybody for joining this evening. Uh, I do hope to probably do a part two and if there is interest, feel free to let us know. And if you need to access uh, that guided visualization or the webinar at any time, feel free to, uh, to go to www.mentalhealthfoundations.ca. And I hope you all have a lovely evening or the remainder of your day and encourage you to try and set a boundary somewhere in your life today. Take care. <laughs>